Is the world round? Come on. Let's start by celebrating the evidence that lies before our very own eyes, at our very own fingertips. Is the world round? Come on. Let's clear our minds. Let's make up our own minds. Is the world round? Bollocks. So I'm going to put up 50 quid of my own money to anybody who can out-argue me on the fact that the world is not round. If the world was round, then whenever you move forward, you'll effectively be going downhill. True or false? True. Think about it. Therefore, every time you start running, you should be getting faster and faster. Because, however infinitesimal, you're going downhill. Think about it. Think about a round hill. You're at the top. You, you start to go forward on a hill, and what happens? Almost immediately, you're going downhill. And so you get faster and faster. If the world is round, every... every you should be getting faster and faster. Turn your media player off, whoever this is. However, in Hello. The Turn your media player off. I must have two. I'm You're sorry, Tommy. I'll switch off. Hey, gone. What? He's gone. Call back. Skype back. You can Skype us on play.radio.uk. But turn your media player off so that you're listening on Skype. Otherwise, what you hear, which is being broadcast, is a couple of seconds behind what you hear on Skype. OK, but try again. 50 quid to anybody who can prove to me that the world is round, right now, between now and, well, the course of this show. And what I'm on about here is trusting your own judgment and trusting your own perception and not falling back on what you get told by, and here's the phrase that everyone uses, the powers that be. In this case, it's academics and scientists. If you'd been born 500 years ago, then you would have stuck to what you know, the world is flat. Pictures from space show the world to me to look like a disc, a flat disc. Does planet Earth from space look to you as if it is round? Assuming the pictures were taken from outer space, there are plenty of people who believe that the whole business of going to the moon and even going into outer space, which is getting beyond the atmosphere, has never happened, and the photos are all faked. Whether they're real or whether they're fake, the pictures of Earth from space do not look to me to be a picture of a sphere. But that's not the main reason I want to believe that the world is flat. I want to believe the world is flat is because it's the, uh, because it's the only thing I can be certain of using my own fundamental intelligence. If you'd been born 500 years ago, you wouldn't have questioned this. There might have been one or two soothsayers or witch doctors who wanted to tell you either that the world was round or, as is the case in one Eastern religion, that the world sits on the back of an enormous tortoise who moves around its environment with us on its back. That is scarcely more ridiculous than the idea that we exist at the bottom of a cartwheel of a galaxy full of stars and maybe planets and... Um, fundamental intelligence, if you've been born... Start switching off. You I'm can't sorry. switch. Well, switch, switch it off if you're going to Skype me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm angry now with <laughs> scientists, right, yeah, angry, academics, angry. a new bloody lot. Switch the media player off. It's not rocket science. If you Skype us, good day. Where was I? Yeah, go ahead. Prove the world is round. How interesting you can't, but you believe it utterly, utterly. Apart from a few wise folk who are a member, who are members of an organisation called the Flat Earth Society, which we have in the United Kingdom. And these are basically people who want us to ask the hard questions and want us to go with what we can prove to ourselves, to trust our own judgement. As far as you know, there is no United States of America. Hmm. Unless, of course, you live in the United States of America, in which case... 
there is arguably no Europe. Believing what you can prove to yourself is a freedom that has been taken from us by the tyranny of experts. Now, I'm using the example of the world, which is round, is it bollocks, see? As an example to illustrate just one of the countless beliefs that we have, whole belief systems that we all have, and we sometimes expouse and impose on others, which have been forced on us. Usually when we're at a very early age. I'm talking about why it is that all of us fall for the fact that people get us to believe things, and if they sound important enough, if they're men in suits, then we go along with it. If they're men in white coats, because it's usually men, we go along with it. Is the world round? That's what we've been taught since we were small. We were taught that people four or five hundred years ago who were much more stupid than us. They believed the world, that was, the world was flat. And oh, how we laughed. The world is round. Bollocks. Go ahead, prove it. Prove it. Tommy, Aaron says, to start with, there's a horizon. Meaning that the surface that you are observing from is not an infinite plane. On the clearest of days, the only restriction to your range of sight is the horizon. No, that's not true. That just isn't true. I stood on a hill once and I was told that you could see Wales. This was in southwest London. I was told that if you stand on this hill, you can see what I couldn't. Why not? Because it's too far away. It's too far away. Are you there on line three? Yeah, hi, it's Kev. Hello, Kev. Hi, um, it's round. The, um, clearly the... Pictures pay, uh, taken from space show the Earth's uh, a spherical object. Don't show it as a spherical object. They show it as a disc. It looks like a CD. It, oh, you're saying it's, it's flat? Flat. Yeah. How can you prove it's round? Um, well, because you can't see all the countries. Well, you can't see anything. The pictures from outer space, it's just blue and then some white swirly bits. No, you can clearly see the... Um, no, you can't. Yes, you can. No, you can't. You can. In any case, you believe that those pictures were actually taken from space? Well, well why would somebody fake them? To, to, to it so that they appeared as though they won the moon race. You need to keep up with some of your conspiracy theories. There's a lot of question marks about those pictures. Yeah, but that's only... Nothing. Yeah. See, you're gullible, like everybody else. I'm not. Well, how come you can't see friends, then, when you look across the ocean? Because it's too far away! Nah. Bollocks. What do you mean it's bollocks? Can you see some of the stars that are too far away to be seen with the human eye but can be seen with a telescope? Oh, no. I know which ones are too far away to be seen. But, but, I can't see them, can I? Exactly, why not? Well, how do I know which ones they are? You can't see them because they're too far away. If something is too far away, you can't see it. Yeah, but how do I know that I'm not seeing something? Because it's not there, you fool! But it is there, I see the... F uh, if you can't the see it, then it's... Th th if you can't see it, all right, then you shouldn't believe that it's there. But I can see it. When I look outside, I can see the stars. No, but you can't see France. No. Because it's that's too far. The Earth is very cool. No, you see, you've fallen for it. I not fallen for anything. Of course it's you have. Cool. It's a conspiracy. Let They're trying to get cool. us to believe so many things that are bollocks. Why don't we stand up and say, I believe what I can see with my own eyes, feel with my own hands. If the world was round and you started running, you'd go faster and faster. Think about it. No, but the Earth's not moving that fast. It's not a question of the Earth moving, it's a question of what happens when you go downhill. When you go downhill, you go faster and faster, don't you? Yeah, but the, the slope is, um, it's too big for a human to do. Well, it could be measured. If they can measure how far away Alpha Centauri is to the nearest foot, and that's what they tell us, they can certainly measure how fast, how, what the incline is of the Earth. If you're going downhill, if you're going along, travelling on a round world, you're going downhill. Proportionally, though, our size compared to the incline is nothing. It's still, it, it, it's no, not significant it's enough, measurable. Like now, you see, you're trying too hard to believe something that you can't prove. Why? You can't prove the world's round. Yes, you can. How? I was told it at school. There, baby, there! Another big lie. 
Why are they making us believe that the world is round? Why are they making us believe that we're living in an ever-expanding universe of an almost infinite number of planets when it doesn't feel like that? That's because we haven't travelled the, the sixth dimension yet, have we? Ah, oh, you've been watching too many episodes of Doctor Who. Yeah, it's good, it's good though, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> but it's not science, son. <laughs> it's a show. You know, the guy who plays Doctor Who, actor. David Tennant. Not anymore. No, Matt, Matt Smith now. Tell me the other thing about Doctor Who, if you are a fan. Every new Doctor Who has to be five years younger than the one who played him before. Oh, God, you start he's at 25, isn't he? I know. So the next one's going to be about 19, and then they're going to have to start looking for Doctor Who's, underage Doctor Who's. Well, he's only got three lives left, hasn't he? He doesn't, has he? Yeah, so well, Yeah, well, what's his name? Russell T. Davis will find a way around that, don't worry. Ah, oh, he's out. Has he, has he left it? Yeah, he leaves after all these tenant specials. See, what I want the Americans to, to wake up to is the fact that we now do science fiction better than them. Because all those spin-offs from Star Trek, and what's that one where you go through the Stargate thing? That's rubbish. Yeah, Stargate, and, yeah. Yeah, and Quantum Leap, that was rubbish. Well, it's all Hollywood tradition. I'll go back to the original, isn't it? Rubbish. Yeah. And Star Trek, I don't know, what are they on now? Not the next generation. I gave up with with Star Trek on that. But Doctor Who just gets better and better. It does, yeah. And that's British. Well, I think it's probably the... Uh, between that and Torchwood's our best output at the moment. Fair enough. But... You want to know whether you've won 50 quid because you've beaten me in the argument about the world is flat. Yeah, because you can see the pictures. And you haven't, have you? Oh, yeah. You can't demonstrate it now. Okay. And I can demonstrate it now because if you put on a singlet and a pair of shor shorts, went outside your house and started running, you would not get faster and faster. But you should, if the world is round. Proportion, though, that's our size in relation to the incline, which is insignificant. You're struggling here. Uh, plus there's terrain as well, natural terrain. Where do you live? Hull. No fucking terrain in Hull. There is. There are kidding, it's not. You can see the Amber Bridge from here, mate. <laughs> that's not terrain, that's an eyesore. Yeah. <laughs> should blow that up. Yeah. I don't think man should build bridges. Who are we to meddle with nature? Nah. Nature decided there should be a river there, and if we want to go across it, we swim. That well, river's there for a reason. Going down here, wasn't it? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that. If the world was round, then all the rivers would run off it. All the seas would run dry. If the oh. world was round. Isn't that something to do with the moon, though? The gravity from the moon. Well, we've fallen for that one. Does the moon create tides? That's what we're led to believe. Well, I can't see the pattern of it. I go out on a full moon and expect there to be a neap tide. What? And there's nothing. Yeah, there, there is a bit of a tide this way and that, but the moon causes it. Why do we believe that? We were told at school. And we were told at school, you see. Are you coming round to my way of thinking here? Sort of. I still yeah. don't believe the world's flat, though. And well, you can't prove it's not. So why do you believe it is? Gullible. You're like saying it's like a cake cutter shape, though, rather than three dimensional. Aren't I you? don't know, but I know it's flat. It's round. My experience is that it's flat. I couldn't prove to you that it's round, so I'm not going to try. If it was flat, though, that the, the gravity of it spinning around the sun wouldn't work, would it? Well, how do you know any of that's true? Because it spin on it. Oh. How do you know any of that's true? Because you've been told. I've, I've never seen gravity, I'll give you that. You've never seen gravity? No, I, I've got no um, conceptualisation of what gravity is. Let me explain to you. You're a young man and I want to make the rest of your passage through this flat earth as happy and contented as possible. Okay. Yep. You've never seen gravity. No. When the men in white coats, when the people who are telling us what we're supposed to believe, 
get round to coming up with a plausible explanation for this thing called gravity, however fictional it is, they'll let us know. Mm. But they haven't actually been creative enough to come up with a fictional explanation for gravity, and so they're actually saying at the moment, we don't understand it. That's what the official explanation for gravity amounts to. We don't know. Now, we know gravity works, don't we? Because when you jump up, you fall down. So you're entitled to believe that. But are you entitled to believe that it's because you're attracted to the Earth, which is what they think gravity is? No. That it's a force? No. Our intelligence just tells us, well, I'm heavy. Yeah. So I'll fall back down there. Well, well, the only time I've actually felt gravity... Well, I'm, it's not even gravity. It's, you know when you get two magnets together? Yeah. And you feel the, the repulsion yeah. and the attraction? Yeah. That's, that's the only... Uh, it, but that's, that's magnetism, isn't it? It's not gravity. There's so many things that can't be explained, and yet we know that it's true. Now, a needle on a compass, points to the north. Mm. Why? No idea. Nobody knows. And you Nobody you knows! Them. You make them at school, don't you? With the yeah. Petri dish and water. Yeah! It points to the north, wherever you are on the earth. If that's not an argument for the world being flat, I don't know what is. <laughs> huh? Well, where does it point when you're at the North Pole? <laughs> in the centre... Because there is no north there, is there? You'd think somebody would have gone to the North Pole and got out a compass <laughs> and filmed it going round and round and round. But I even heard from somebody that actually magnets, compass needles, don't point to the North Pole, which is the top of the Earth, allegedly. Mm. They point to what's called the magnetic north, which is hundreds of miles away from the North Pole. Why? Maybe someone measured the Earth wrong. <laughs> There's so many things we don't know. We need to spend more of our time going, I don't know, and nobody else does. And I'm not having some funny-looking bloke who looks like the mad professor out of that uh, Time Machine film. What was that called? Back to the Future. Back to the Future, yeah. What was his Scott name Brown. again? Huh? Great Scott! <laughs> yeah, him. <laughs> They're the sort of guys who are telling us that the world is round and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. And I say the time has come for us to start saying no. Just because you've got more letters after your name than me doesn't necessarily mean I have to believe everything you say. The world does not look round to me. Bollocks is the world round. Prove it. Make me believe it by proving it. And I need more than just dubious pictures taken by Buzz Alcoholic Aldrin. <laughs> well, there's 50 quid at stake here, so I'm going to do my research. <laughs> yeah, come back to me. I will do. I'll take you, I'll, I'll gladly send you the money. I'll be delighted. If you can prove to me that the world is round. I will, Tommy. You won't. I will. You won't. I will. Good talking to you. Nice to speak to you. Yeah. And this is what we're talking about today. Them. What they get up to. I'm not necessarily talking about the New World Order here, or, or the Masons, or even the Establishment. I'm talking about the fact that various people do things and then say things with an enormous sense of authority about what they've said and we all of us you me everybody swallow it hook line and sinker because they sound as though they know what we're talking about and we're too frightened to say bollocks so come on the world is round is it bollocks tamsin says now this is a revelation not a revolution of course the world must be flat it would explain why the Australians are so good at bungee jumping. They are upside down. No, Tamsin, we don't know that Australia is underneath us. We don't know that if you dig down through planet Earth in the United Kingdom, you come to Australia. Wherever you live on the planet Earth, when you were small, you were told that if you carried on digging, you would end up in X. Where would the Americans end up? I'm presuming Iran, Iraq, somewhere like that. Yeah. I think Iran, Iraq is about as far away as you can get from the United States. Am I right? That's an interesting thought. Good day. It's Play Talk UK. It's Tommy Boyd looking at why we believe 
whatever people who appear to know what they're talking about tell us. They tell us that the world is round. Let's start there. Bollocks. Prove it. 50 quid of my money says you can't. The world is round. Bollocks. Prove it. Go right ahead and prove it. You can't. You can't prove that one. And yet you believe it. So think of all the other things that you believe, that you're certain about, that you shouldn't really believe because you aren't certain and you can't prove it to yourself. Aaron is anxious for the 50 quid of my own money that I've put up to anybody who can make a decent argument that proves to me, <clears throat> sat here, you sat there or standing there, wherever you are, if you're podcasting and you're on a train, you're probably standing, that the world is round. Look out of the window. Does it look round to you? If it was round and you started running, you'd get faster and faster and faster because you're going downhill. The opposite happens. Aaron has Skype text. What about air travel or sailing? Why don't those sailboats fall off the edge? Because it's round. Well, those sailboats don't go in a perfect straight line around the world, do they? You look at the dotted lines that they show you when one of those nuts who likes to sail single-handed around the world, why, attention-seeking, what does it do? What good does it do? Does it drill any wells in Africa? No. Does it do the shopping for any little old lady? No. Other people do. We don't put them on the television news, but we do put the attention-seekers who are sailing single-handed around the world on the news. Let's ignore them. And then they'll go away. But when they do do it, you'll notice that the dotted lines that they use on the maps of the allegedly round world zigzag all over the blood shop. And who's to say that they simply haven't gone round in a circle? This Skype in from Michael Dooley, who says, I subscribe to the view that we all live on a frequency range that we access through our bodies. And we move to a different range when we outlive our body. We only get to access what is in this range, like a radio. A radio that only accesses the stations that's in its range. And that is why, says Michael Dooley, we have such narrow belief systems. Now, we're starting to get somewhere here. I mean, and this is, this is good stuff. Uh, it, it could easily turn out to be absolute bollocks, but what I'm saying is we're told, informed instructed and there's no room for argument that the world is round bollocks prove it prove it 50 quid of my own hard earned ah it's not a life-changing experience but i'll send you a 50 pound note and you only see them at the racetrack okay tommy says peter if i bet you 50 pounds tonight that i could prove 100 percent to you that people are still being accused of witchcraft and beaten and burnt to death at the stake in the year 2009, would you be prepared to lose £50 if I proved witchcraft trials are still going on, or would you dare to call me wrong when I have proof of what I have just said to you in this email can't be challenged by you, Peter from Birmingham? Well, I don't know about in Puerto Rico or, or Haiti or... Those are the countries which, according to James Bond films, they still practice mumbo-jumbo. I'm sure it's just uh, the people at Elstree who've come up with that idea. Which Bond film was that? The one with Jane Seymour. She was good, wasn't she? So, anyway. Uh, Peter, if you're placing a bet with me, I want the absolute precision from you. I'm a journalist, so I want it precise. You want me, you believe that you can prove to me that people are still being burnt to death at the stake in the year 2009, for witchcraft. Okay, Peter, I'd like you to prove it. Andrew and Yvonne have emailed me. Thank you very much indeed for this. Mr Boyd, me and my girlfriend Yvonne Rhodes are currently sitting in our garden as the sun sets here in Birmingham. We've been thinking about your suggestion of planet Earth being flat. Interesting. I think you may have a point. Though, after all, when you bounce a ball, it doesn't jump sideways, does it? No. And I bet you even the most scrutinising atomic microscope couldn't discern a kick to the left or the right. Interesting, he says. I think you may have a point. It bounces straight back up. 
And if the planet was truly round, we'd all be falling over because we're standing on a curve. Are we talking bollocks and agreeing with you, Tommy? No. The point I'm trying to make here is very clear. Why do we all believe the world is round when all our senses tell us that it's flat? Because important people have told us from the very earliest age that the world is round. None of the evidence that we have, evidence of our own eyes, our own feet at our fingertips, tells us that the world is round. It tells us that the world is flat. The pictures of the Earth taken from the moon, taken from space, show the world looking exactly like a cheap CD, doesn't it? It really looks like it's music of the mountains, or catch a pyre, or some such nonsense, with that blue and the swirly white clouds. But it looks like a disc, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Have you ever seen a photograph of planet Earth that made it look as though it was a sphere? Why not? Why aren't the edges a bit more blurred as they go round and out of sight? They're not. And there's a simple fact that if you look out of the window, it looks flat. And there's the other fact that if it's round, whenever you start running forwards, you're inevitably running downhill, but you don't get faster, you get slower. I know that last one might sound like a cheap, silly, jokey argument, but my point is, come on, beat it. If you believe the world is round, 50 pounds, a purple one, the most beautiful note, money note, on planet Earth, although I do like the American dollar. Isn't that beautiful? Is yours, if you can prove, corroborated by a third party, i.e. someone from around here, and they'll be honest, that the planet, that planet Earth is round. <laughs>